Hey everybody, so it's November 29th and uh, we're coming to the end of the full river salmon fishing season now. This time of year is pretty quiet for me. Um, I have actually haven't been fishing for the last two weeks now. Just been busy with catching up with work, which I've neglected throughout this whole fishing season. And um, it's also the time of year that I get to reflect a little bit about the season and also about the fish themselves. Now, salmon spawning takes place between now and up until mid to late January. And um, they often takes place in areas where we don't actually fish. So there's a bit of a disconnection between fishermen and the fish themselves. And I think it's quite important for me to do a video about this so we have a better understanding on what these fish go through and really appreciate the process. Now, so a couple of days ago, I actually went up to the upper Chilliwack River uh, with Matt Foy, who's a retired biologist. And he was responsible for the DFO's salmon enhancement program, uh, which involves uh, overseeing the community hatcheries and restoring salmon habitat, which we've lost because of deforestation or urbanization. So we can make sure these fish are sustainable and, um, and also even thriving. So that was his job. So we went up to the upper Chulak River, like I said, to see some of these off channels, which were restored. Now off channels are channels that were man-made away from the river in the forest. And uh, the river, we draw the water from the river through the channel so the fish can spawn in there. But also they're great refugees for um, juvenile salmon to living for for the time being before they go into the ocean. Uh, so these are great areas for salmon because it protects them from flood events when the water is too high in the river. Um, they can go into these smaller channels which are a lot more peaceful and um, they also act as protection for them from predation and also for food. Um, these are great places for them to feed in wetlands where there's insects in the springtime and summertime as well. So Matt is very, very knowledgeable when it comes to this. And I think it's quite important to talk about the history of not quite often we talk about the negative impacts we have had on salmon, but I think it's quite important, important that we talk about the positive impacts that we've made on salmon populations as well. And this is definitely one of them. So I won't speak too much about it. You guys can watch it. The rest of the video is going to be me following Matt around and he's going to be talking about the work that has been done over the last 20 years. And uh, yeah, so thank you for watching. Be sure to share this video with others, um, whether they fish or not. I think it's important to learn about salmon um, because this is uh, these species are really, really important um, culturally, ecologically, um, economically as well. Be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel and thank you for watching again. Uh, we'll see you in the next video. Oh, you might have come in. You might be in between waves. I don't know how there's a pair over there. We're at the Yuckalup side channel. We're just uh, maybe three or four kilometers downstream from Chilliwack Lake. And this is one of the areas that was worked during the what I call the BC forest renewal phase from 1995 to 2001. And it was a series of works that were a partnership between uh, the BC government, uh, what was called the Watershed Restoration Program, and the federal government through the Salmon Hansen Program. And we did, oh, I would say six, seven, eight uh, quite significant off-channel projects uh, all the way down to um, just below the hatchery. These are called off-channel in that um, they're, they are protected from the worst of the flooding. And in this river that's, um, relatively high gradient here in the upper end of the river, uh, the fish are seeking these types of habitats. So if they can find it, they use it. So when you do create it, no, we don't have to bring fish in. They find it very quickly. Now you may not get a full use of the habitat, but within one cycle, generally, that habitat is full. So it's a, it's a, it's a type of habitat that they're hardwired to seek out. We were wanting to focus particularly on pink, but also on chum. Uh, because those species uh, are sort of a keystone species for the other ones, things like steelhead, like coho salmon. 
And um, so a juvenile uh, steelhead, I know they've done studies on the Keogh River and the, on, uh, on the island. And what they find is if uh, pinks come every second year, on a big pink year, the steelhead smolts are something like 25% larger. In other words, that one species supports another species, and the rarer species like steelhead, uh, like coho salmon, actually uh, benefit greatly if there's an abundant source of pink and chum in the watershed. So we designed this for all those species, pink chum, coho, coho uh, in the winter, like pond habitat, all of them like the gravel spawning areas, steelhead like juveniles like the little quicker boulder reachers when they're little. When they're a little bit bigger they'll go out into the main river so this might be good for their first few months of life. All these habitats are man-made and they require some maintenance. Now as a designer we try to uh, design habitats that could could last for significant lengths of times, uh, let's say 20 years without uh, major maintenance. Now this project has actually passed that. So what sort of maintenance are we talking about? Is this one in, it gets uh, is water supply from a, a small pipe we take from Chilliwack River. Now it doesn't pass a lot of gravel, so we get so many fish spawning in this little side channel, they actually move the gravel one way, that's downstream, but there's no new gravel at the top. So one of the maintenance every decade or so, a small amount of gravel is injected at the top of the spawning area and the fish just naturally keep moving it through. We can almost do that indefinitely, just coming in, we're standing on a little access road, we left it here. Now, in a big flood year, for instance, this gravel is very stable. It's not hurt by floods, whereas if it, the fish that spawn in the river will pay a price in a big flood year. So what these things are, they're not just a little bit more habitat, because the river's a big place. They're like an insurance policy. In bad uh, freshwater condition years, like flood years, these areas keep the population from collapsing for many of our populations. So again, a small amount of habitat can have a large effect. Now I'll give you an example. We did a study, we did uh, half a dozen of these off channels above the Chilliwack hatchery. Uh, we did a study on coho salmon. We probably added less than a quarter of a percent of the habitat that the coho use. So they, they use the river above the Chilliwack hatchery, they use Chilliwack Lake, and they get at least 20 kilometers into the U.S. So there's a big piece of habitat. And we built six of these off-channel. But because they're so high value for keeping these little coho alive through a winter, a cold winter or a flood winter, uh, we, were, we wanted to assess well, what impact did they have on the co total coho smolts leaving that portion of the watershed, the whole watershed. So what we did one year is we, we captured all the coho smolts in these six off channels, we marked them, and we had a trap down at Chilliwack. What we found was 40% of the total wild fish leaving the upper watershed came out of those off channels. So probably a quarter percent of the habitat produced 40%. So you effectively almost doubled the wild population by giving them a little bit of what's called critical habitat. So the definition of critical habitat is a little change has a big impact. If you're worried about predators, this is the best place to spawn because if anything scoops, scoots you, or scares you, you just scoot up here in the pond. So we would keep putting gravel here, but within five years they take all the small gravels you can see it's, it's now the size they can't move. Hmm. So they just love pounding this one section here. And I have actually seen steelhead on this little section here. It's one of the issues with steelhead when you're the only fat juicy fish spawning and there's not many of you, everybody wants to eat you so they have to be really careful yeah. where they spawn. And that, that's why these smaller creeks aren't as attractive to them I think. And spend, stay out a little deeper water. But they will spawn in here. The, the, the juveniles do very well in here. But, yeah. So this is uh, Angel Wing, um, we call it Angel Wing Link and Side Channel, but it's an old remnant channel of the uh, Chilliwack River. It, it 
appears not to have carried any flow for probably hundreds of years. It might have been formed when a large log jam had formed and pushed the water here and then the jam broke down. But it was still had a, a little bit of groundwater uh, base flow that created what we call Anjuing Lake, which is a little marshy lake here. And then when they did the Chilliwack Lake Road, whenever it was first put in the 40s, uh, they just diverted the outlet and it was not accessible to salmon. So it had been inaccessible since the Chilliwack Lake Road was built. So during the forest renewal phase and on one of those projects, we put a little intake into the Chilliwack River put some water into this old uh, dry channel, made a little short section for spawning for species like coho, a few steelhead, chum, pinks, the odd chinook. And then, it, then that water goes into the wetland, and then it goes, half of it goes along the road. So about over a kilometer and a half, there's a series of channels and wetlands. Very rich produ producer of coho smolts, which is the primary species that would benefit. Uh, but as I said, there's chum, pinks, few steelhead, some chinook. And if you look around, we're standing in a in a wide uh, wide field of body parts here, mainly coho. It looks like these are the last fish in, but I'm sure the bears have been eating fish since uh, late September. And now it's in December almost.